Hi guys, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Kyra and here on my channel, we are all about real makeup for real life and real people. video is my month in review for January 2021. If you're new here every month I do a video like this where I talk about some favorites from the month, any fails, any channel announcements, and new this month I'll be sharing with you my custom palette that I created out of single eyeshadows for February. But before we get into all of that, if you are new here, I hope you will consider subscribing before you leave if you like what you see today. It'll help you find my videos more easily on Tuesday Thursday and Saturday when I upload and allegedly if you ring that notification bell to all YouTube will let you know when that happens. So let's talk about some tops for the month shall we? My first top for the month of January is the Sydney Grace Enduring Love palette. I did do seven looks with this palette so I'll go ahead and link that up in the cards and in the description box for you but these are just the most insane shadows I have ever used. Oh man, they are buttery. They are smooth and they are so shiny. Oh my goodness. These are the shades John and Albert. Oh my goodness. I cannot wait to create more looks with this palette. I did seven and yet I feel like I barely scratched at the surface of the looks that I could create with this palette and just everything about this palette is perfect. There's not a shade I would let go of. Uh, even these two shades up here that I was like not super attracted to when I first got the palette or when I even ordered the palette, but I did actually really come to enjoy those shades and I'm glad that they're in this one. I just had a blast playing with this. The formula is insane. There is a darker version of this palette, which I failed to mention in my video, and I'm sorry about that. So if you are of a beautiful, deeper complexion, there's still an option for you because otherwise some of these mattes could definitely look ashy on someone of a deeper skin tone. But this is insane. I wouldn't be surprised if this is in the Journey and Beauty Awards for 2021. I know it's early to start making predictions now, but this is just probably one of the best palettes I have ever tried in my life. The next top for the month actually came from my monochromatic project pan and this month the color was purple or plum and this is a beautiful plummy colored blush from Hourglass. This is the ambient lighting blush in the shade Mood Exposure. One of my favorite probably top three blush in my collection. It looks like nothing very special. Even swatched out it will look like nothing really very special. It's plummy, it's nude, but it's just perfect. This looks like what I actually look like when my skin flushes naturally. In terms of coming out of the cold, I should say, because during the summer and the warmer months, if I'm flushed from heat, it's more of like a terracotta color or fig color, and that's why I have so many blushes like that. But this is the only blush I have like this, and having it in my project for the month of January for the Monochromatic Year Project Pan was a real treat actually. I had the goal to use it 10 times. I did use it 10 times, spoiler alert, and um, it's beautiful. I, yeah, I, you know, someday when she's all gone, I will buy the full size because I love that blush. And then last favorite or top for the month was the Dior Backstage Face and Body Foundation. I picked this up on a whim as a promo perk from Sephora when I made an order, I believe it was sometime in November or December, and I went ahead and picked this up. I've always wanted to try it. Some of my favorite YouTubers actually really love it and have similar skin types to me, which is combination skin. I got this shade at 3N, and this is a little dark for me now. I tried putting this on yesterday, and I was like, okay, we definitely have a 1990s Kyra you know, line vibe because I didn't know how to shade match foundation. So 
I'm gonna have to put this away for a little while, but that's okay. I have promised myself when I use up two foundations, I could potentially purchase this for myself if I still feel like I want it. And I just really like this. It's super lightweight. It almost has, I think I described in another video, it has a texture almost like a dry oil if you've ever felt that texture, but it's not oily at all. In fact, it's very, very good on my combination to oily skin. And I just, I love how lightweight it is. It really feels like I have nothing on my skin, which is definitely the money spot for me. I just, I don't mind wearing foundation and sometimes I even want to wear foundation and even things out, things like that but I don't wanna feel like I'm wearing foundation or I'm just gonna wash my makeup off likely. So this is a really good one and I'm glad that I finally tried it. Let's talk bottoms. And I only have one this month, so it's just a bottom. <laughs> but I'll put a picture up because I've already decluttered this and it is the IT Cosmetics Your Skin But Better CC Cream. Now, I will not tell you that this is a bad product. All I will say is that I finally know for once and for all that this is not a product for my skin type. It's very rich. It's very kind of thick, which is, you know, one of the things like I talked about with the Dior Backstage Foundation. I don't want to feel like I'm wearing makeup. And no matter how little of the It CC Cream that I use, it just feels like I'm wearing a hydrating like face mask or something like that. I just don't love it. It breaks down on my skin super easily. I think dry skin would love this because it actually does feel like skincare on the skin. But for me, my oily skin will not absorb any moisture than what it already has in terms of a moisturizer, any type of primer I might put on top of my skin, sunscreen. So um, this type of foundation that's really rich and thick like that does not do anything but just sit right on top of my skin. It looks oily, it looks makeup-y, looks cakey if I add powder into the mix, which I typically do. So I, you know, I wanted to try a little sample of it again and just see if, you know, maybe I've grown in my skills in terms of application or whatever. But I tried it a myriad of different ways and it's just not for me and that's okay. Not a bad product, just not for me. So next, I really just wanted to talk about a couple of standout products from my Shop My Stash from January. And I thought that this video would be kind of a good place to do that. And the first thing that I wanted to talk about is the NARS Soft Matte Complete Foundation. I have the shade Fiji, which is just a titch yellow for me, which you can probably see, but I can even that out and work with it. I was so surprised by this foundation in so many ways. Again, I picked this up as a um, a promotion at Sephora. One of those, you know, if you spend $25, you can get this or, if you, you know, whatever. You know what I'm saying if you order from Sephora. And I like to try new products that way because then I get to try the new product, but I don't have to commit to even purchasing it. I just got a freebie because I was purchasing something else. This is very liquidy, which I did not expect because the soft matte concealer from NARS is very thick like it's a potted concealer it's very thick very matte all of those things this is very liquidy it's like runny yet like a lot of liquidy foundations for example the Dior backstage it's very sheer or very light coverage, depending on how you apply it and things like that. This, whoa, <laughs> full coverage from a tiny dot on the cheek. They do recommend you use your fingers and I do too. I don't think that this would apply very well with a brush or a sponge just based on the fact that you really kind of have to warm the product up with the warmth of your hands in order to be able to spread it and diffuse it because it is so full coverage. For me, this is definitely not an everyday foundation because I'm not into that life, that full coverage life, nothing against it, it's just me. But I think this is great, actually. I was really surprised. I was surprised that I liked it. I was expecting not to like this. This was a very polarizing foundation when it first launched and people were reviewing it and receiving it in PR and things like that. And so I kind of, 
ordered it with the expectation that I probably wouldn't like it, but I did want to sort of check it off my list of trying it, kind of like the Dior. So um, I was surprised. I like this. Not an everyday foundation for me, but it'd be great for like an event foundation. It wears pretty well on my skin, depending on what I wear underneath it. The best option for me is Tatcha Silk Canvas or another sort of pore filling smoothing primer to sort of grip this foundation versus like a hydrating base. Like some foundations I'll wear the um, Bobbi and Brown, Bobbi and Brown, Bobbi Brown Vitamin Enriched Face Face underneath, you know, if I need a more hydrating base. But this was really good. I was surprised. I'm gonna keep it in the stash for the occasion that I might need a more full coverage foundation. You know, like my skin has really been suffering hormonally. So, you know, never know. And then the other product that really stood out to me for the month of January were my Sydney Grace Single Eyeshadows, which I keep in these beautiful ColourPop palettes. These are some of my mattes. I'll tell you the shades that I'm wearing today. I'm wearing a transition shade out of my Viseart Paris Edit palette that I'm working on in my 21 pans in 2021. But then I went in with this shade Peanut Butter in the crease. And then this shade, this burgundy bricky shade right here, I used on the outer V and a little bit up into the crease as well. Another favorite for me out of this group of mattes here is this little turquoise number right there. That one is called Thrilled and it's such a fun little addition to the outer corner, deepen things up, but also add a little bit of color. Um, it is deep, but it does have, you know, a strong teal pigment that sticks around even after you blend. So I really have been enjoying those. There are a few of those missing, however. And then these are some of my shimmer shades right here. And the ones that I use today, I use the shade called Dive right here, which is kind of like a teal that flashes olive green. I'll swatch it in just a second. This shade right here, which is called Mint Green. I think it's more of a light turquoise, but I didn't name it. And then this is a duochrome right here called Green Mist. So these are the three shades that I use today. That dive shade is so cool. It's definitely a different duochrome than a lot that I have seen. So that is what those three shades, and you can see here that the shine is every bit as present in these single shadows as in the Enduring Love palette. They're smooth, they're buttery, but they're not thick or heavy, which is really nice because then you can really work to sort of layer these things up because I don't think you would be able to tell where one shadow starts and the other begins, but I put the dive shade more toward the outer part of the eye. I put mint green slash light turquoise on the inner part of my eye. And then I took the green mist shade, which is just kind of a sheer green duochrome on the very, very inner part of the lid. And I really love how this look came out, but I do have some mixed in here. I believe these four right here are all from the Mountain Trail bundle, which you have to buy separately or as a bundle rather. Um, but, oh man, did I have a lot of fun playing with these this month. Another couple of favorites here are these like three purpley pinky shades that are duochromes. I just can't even. I'm like kicking myself that I didn't try out Sydney Grace way earlier because I knew about the brand and I knew I wanted to build a collection of singles for myself because I do look at my shadows like paints because I paint. I paint with acrylics, not as much as I used to before I had a YouTube channel, <laughs> mind you, but I do have that eye for color and I really enjoy playing with mixing colors and, you know, pairing them together. And single shadows is a really fun way to do that. So I'm really glad that I picked up the singles that I did. I am gonna wait to purchase any more, probably until July when they have a sale again. But man, did I have a lot of fun with those. And I did include some of those in my custom palette for the month, which we're gonna talk about right now. All right, so my custom palette that I built for the month of February, I'm going to call this hot and cold romance, <laughs> something like that. I don't know. I just started playing around with my singles. I have the Sydney Grace singles, but I also have 
a lot of or an equal amount of beauty junkies eyeshadow singles and I'll have both companies brands link below they're not affiliate links or anything like that it's just a link to the brand in case you're curious but some of these are Sydney Grace and some of these are from beauty junkies but I really I love green and pink together so I kind of had a little bit of a green moment down here I added some pinks in over here, but I also love to combine warm and cool tones together. I think that that really adds interest to the eye and can be really fun. I think that's why you see so many duochromes that have like a warm base with a cool shift or vice versa. So that's kind of what I was doing in here. Definitely going to be doing multiple looks with this specific palette in February. So if you have any ideas on how you'd like to see me present that to you guys or demonstrate that to you guys, please let me know down in the comments because of course I always want to create content that you guys are interested in seeing. So um, yeah, this is what I got. I'll put up on the screen here um, the picture of this palette with all of the shade names as well as underneath it will have SG for Sydney Grace or BJ for Beauty Junkies. And, you know, there's a nice mix in there. I'm really, really excited to be working with this in the month of February in addition to Shop My Stash and Project Pan. <laughs> wow. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to talk about is the two, well, three things that I added to my wish list for the first quarter. Um, I'm trying to buy less. So I'm trying to write things down and sort of marinate on them and even wait a little bit until some of the hype has passed before really considering purchasing anything this year. So the first thing that went on my wish list in January was the Melt Cosmetics Blueprint Eyeshadow Palette. And I still want this. <laughs> um, this will probably be the first palette of the year that I buy unless something else comes out because I really wanted the blueprint stack um, for a long time, but I knew myself and I knew I wasn't likely to reach into that kind of a component very often, that it would get put to the side with singles or potted shadows or something like that. But then they brought out the palette and it's the same as the stack and I'm just like here for it. And I Melt Cosmetics is definitely a brand that I was keen to try this year in 2021. So that is on there as well as I had on there the Rare Beauty Stay Vulnerable Melting Cream Blush. I had written down the shades Nearly Apricot and Nearly Neutral. Those are each $21 from Sephora. And guess what my girlfriend Angela from Beauty and Life with Angela picked up for my birthday and it is on its way to me, the Rare Beauty blush. And she picked out the shade Nearly Apricot, which was first on my list. So I'm really excited to play with that. And thank you, Angela. The last thing that I put on my wish list so far this year is a custom lipstick from Finding Ferdinand. I'm gonna link the video down below that I'm talking about, but Hannah Louise posted recently posted a video about creating four custom lipsticks through this company called Finding Ferdinand. And I watched the video and I was so enthralled with it. I always wanted to do the Bite Beauty Lip Lad, but that's like in Soho and I live in Colorado, so <laughs> that's not likely to happen. And from what I understand, it was really expensive. The Fighting Ferdinand custom lipstick that you create your own shade is $33, which mind you is up there for a lipstick, but it is cheaper than a Charlotte Tilbury lipstick by a few bucks. And you get to create your own shade. And where Hannah Louise Posting kind of stood on is that she's so pale that a lot of times in order to find a pale nude for her skin uh, tone can be very hard. So that's kind of what she worked on creating. And for me, I don't, I mean, I have a few colors in mind and I'll save that in case I do pick one of these up and do a video on it. But you can either like work with the little color wheel and drag the dot around and do it that way. Or they have like some pre-selected shades where you can kind of mix things like, okay, I want a pink, I want to add a little orange, I'll add a little black to make it deeper, I'll add a little white to gray it out a little bit, and so on and so forth. So there are a couple of different ways that you can create these lipsticks 
then you can name it and they print the name on a sticker on the bottom of the component. The component itself is beautiful and very fancy and it just seemed like an overall great experience for Hannah. I don't want to add a lot of lip products to my collection this year. I finally just got them decluttered and I'm really happy with where that is at at the moment. But that's something I would consider, you know, just and using my beauty budget for or what have you to review for my channel and just, you know, have the experience, which I am all about in this life. Wow, that was a long one. Usually these are kind of shorter videos, but hopefully it'll get shorter in editing um, in case I rambled. But I had a great January. I'm really excited about being back to project panning, although trying not to overdo that and want to do 10,000 projects just because I'm enjoying it. I'm glad to be shopping my stash still, and I feel really great, though a wee bit w w worse for the wary, after doing my collection and declutter series, which I will also link the playlist down below in case you missed any of those. But yeah, I feel great going into February. I'm really excited. I'm really excited about what the products I'm going to be panning this mo coming month. I'm really excited about the products I'm going to shop my stash for this month in addition to all of that. So stay tuned. I have a lot of fun content coming towards you. And as always, if you have any suggestions or requests, you can leave those in the description. No, you can leave those in the comments. I'll leave something in the description box. You use the comments. Anyhow, Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. And I hope all of your makeup days are absolutely beautiful makeup days. And I will see you in my next video soon.